Hello lovely people, I'm K3N and welcome to week 15 of our slow stitch along for 2024. Um, before we start with week 15 I just wanted to say how lovely it was to see all the work in the private Facebook group and on Instagram for last week, week 14, um, where I stitched a, a wolf running across the moon. Uh, many, many people have also did wolves but there were also owls and bats and ravens and all other kinds of birds. Um, there were some witches, there was um, a hiker against the moon because someone lived in the desert where they did um, nighttime hikes by moonlight. Um, so many wonderful things I can't even remember them all. But it's so lovely to see all the different interpretations and also all the words that went along with it. Edgar Allan Poe cropped up, um, there were many many poems featuring the moon. There was a lovely poem from Walter de la Mer who was a favourite childhood poet of mine. Um, I can't even, there were so many, but they were all wonderful and it's lovely to see. Um, so this week, today, Monday, the 8th of April, um, across most of America um, will be visible a solar eclipse. Um, and I think about 30 million people are living within what is called the path of totality. That is the area within which you can see the, the eclipse. Don't look directly at it. I'm sure you've been told that five billion times if, if you live uh, in the States. Um, but have, being that we did we, look, we did the moon last week, we did the moon, you know what I mean, um, and the week before we did stars, that wonderful friendship star quilt, I thought the sun this week was, you know, unavoidable really because that makes a nice little trio of celestial bodies. Um, so this week we'll take our inspiration from the sun and also the moon because obviously the moon plays an important role, uh, a starring role. Hmm. Pardon the pun. <laughs> A starring role in the solar eclipse. Um, so, and the other thing I've, I've been wanting to look at for some time and, and show you, building on the running stitch, which I talked about a lot last week, is the stacked running stitch. Um, now this, I think I first saw it done many, many years ago by the wonderful Jude Hill, um, who has videos here on YouTube and is, also has a wonderful blog. Um, called, I think it's called Cloth Whisperer. I'll link it below anyway. Um, but also there's a Dutch artist called Miriam Giele. I think I'm saying that correctly. Miriam, I do apologise if my Dutch accent is um, wanting. But she has wonderful, um, she's got a wonderful Instagram feed, so I'll link that below as well. And she does some um, really great stitch tutorials via her Patreon. Um, so if I link her Instagram, then you can find everything else there. Um, so yeah, so this week will be the sun, the the solar eclipse. Um, I look forward here in France. I you know we I won't see it at all, but I look forward to seeing pictures online, um, and the stacked running stitch. So before I go to my desk and we start, I just wanted to show you this in case you missed it. Last Wednesday, last wonky Wednesday, um, I made this little envelope pouch out of um, courthouse steps blocks, which are related to the log cabin. And um, it's just a little, you know, square pouch. You could make it with any other kind of square. It doesn't have to be the log cabin blocks. But just, you know, just in case you missed Wonky Wednesday, just thought I'd show you that so you can go back and have a look. Um, and this coming, this coming Wednesday, I'm going to do something else um, from a journal, another little arty piece inspired by the log cabin construction. So look out for that. And on Friday, um, I'm going to um, do a video about eco printing and natural dyeing using onion skins. So look out for that as well, because a lot of people have been asking about my natural dyeing and eco printing. Um, at this time of year here, the leaves are not really, you know, out enough or giving enough for me to do anything with, with actual leaves. So um, we'll start with onion skins because those are, you know, always available. Um, okay, so I'm going to go over to my desk now and we'll get started on our little mini solar eclipse. Okay, so I'm all cut out, ready to go, but I'll just talk you through what you'll need. Um, <clears throat> I've got a foundation square of some old sheet. Happens to be tea dyed, but you know, it's just the right size. Something thin, again, because we're using layers, you don't want to put thick things. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then I'm going to put this little square of yellow, which is a bit of a scrap of quilter's cotton, actually. I don't have a lot of yellow. Um, not, you know, yellow, yellow. Mellow yellow. That's a blast from the past. Um, Donovan, I believe. Anyway, <laughs> and then I've got a square of this sort of purplish colour 
to represent the sky during the eclipse. Obviously, I'm being very um, abstract, artistic license. And out of that, I've cut a hole and I've used a bit of sellotape, um, a reel of sellotape. I'm working my way through my tapes as circle templates. But basically, you want something, you know, this size. I've left some area around here for, for the stitching and then something slightly smaller out of black cloth for your moon because during an eclipse you just see the outline of the sun. It's called a, a corona or a corolla, I can't remember which. Anyway, it's called one of those two things. Um, I'll look it up and I'll write it on the screen. Um, and that's how I'm going to build up my layers. So you'll need a background cloth, a little yellow square, a, a purplish, blackish, greyish type square, whatever you've got, and a smaller piece of some black. And then you'll need, um, obviously, your scissors, you'll need things to draw around. Um, I'm going to do some invisible basting first, so I've got a beigey coloured thread to baste on here and some black thread to baste on here. And then for my running stitch, I'm going to use two different colours of embroidery floss. So I've got an orangey colour and a yellowy colour. And a needle and some applique pins, and I think that's it. Okay, so I'm going to just, I think I'm going to take the moon off and first of all I'm going to baste these three layers together. Um, and while I'm doing that I'll, I'll talk more about layers. Um, uh, can you hear Stella snoring? <laughs> Honestly. Uh, first thing in the morning we go for a, a nice walk around the woods, we don't go too far because big dog, you know, serious and his arthritic hips. Um, but she always, and especially if Fred Fred comes as well, which he did this morning, she d makes the same tour but about ten times because they just race round and round because they know which way I'm going. And then Fred Fred will run up a tree and then I'll hear her yipping because he's gone up a tree and she can't get him and then he'll come down and then they'll come racing around again. But anyway, that's quite good because then me and the old dog just plod along and she gets plenty of exercise racing around with Fred. Um, okay, so I've got my background layer, my yellow square and my purple square. And I'm just going to do some invisible baste just around the very, about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Mm -hmm. This cloth is a bit of oak shot, which is woven with one colour one way and one colour the other. Um, but it is quite fray, fray -y. it frays, so I don't want to get too close to the edge in case I, you know, bodge it up. So I'm just doing a little back stitch and on the front and a bigger stitch on the back, just to hold it down invisibly. Just checking I'm in shot. Um, as I mentioned, I went to do, um, as I mentioned, I am did, I filmed Sorry, words. I've filmed an eco printing video. I've done it already for this coming Friday with onion skins, like I said. Um, but I had I had to set my camera up downstairs in the kitchen. So I took all my gear down. You know, I've only got one. Well, actually, I've got two camera stands, but I've only got one clamp for the camera and um, microphone and, and so forth. And... Um, so I had to set it up all downstairs. Anyway, now I've had to, this morning, set it all back up here again in my studio. And um, it took me ages to get it. I had it just right. Um, but then, you know, you put it back and... So I hope it's OK. I hope it's the right distance and everything. And it looks the same as usual. Maybe at one point I can invest in a, a permanent one for here and an, another one for roaming about the place especially when the warmer weather comes and I want to do more eco-printing and so on and more filming outside, so. So, yeah, I didn't put any pins because it's only little, but if you wanted to put some pins to hold it while you, while you do this. Now, what I wanted to say about layers, um, you know, last week was the, the whole theme was layering, the, the technical side of it, shall we call it, you know, the doing of it rather than the, the meaning of it. So you can kind of divide pieces into those two areas, I think, slow stitch pieces. The doing of it, which is very important, the process, and then the, the story that you're telling. 
So there's like two aspects together that you have to work with. Um, and what I wanted to say, say about layers is kind of relating those two things together, really, which they are related, obviously. Um, and that is, if you're making a piece that's representative, even if it's abstract, I like to think about how the elements relate to each other physically in the real world kind of thing, you know? So the most obvious thing would be if you were doing a landscape, then you might have mountains in the distance, and then you might have some woods nearer to you, and then you might have some water um, nearer still, and then you might have some plants in the foreground. So there you've got all those layers of landscape. So as you're building that piece, if you're going to make that in cloth, and we will get into landscapes at one point because it's something I did a lot of um, when I was doing machine work especially. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to go up and just run around the outside as well, I think. I'm just going to hop my thread across. I'm going to stop and start. Um, yeah, it, it's, it helps perspective if you literally layer your cloth in the order that the elements are layered within the piece that you're working on. So it's the same thing here. You know, I mean, the sun is in space and the sky is in space, so it's a little bit, um, you know, it's less literal than the landscape. But I've put, chosen to put the sun behind the sky. If this is the sky and this is the sun. And then obviously the moon will go on top of the sun, but the moon is also within the same layer as the sky. If that makes any sense at all, I hope so. Um, because if I'd put my, just done a square of purple, put the sun on and then put the moon on top, it would all sit up off the sky. And I very much wanted to give the impression that it's all within the sky. I hope you followed that. <laughs> But yeah, that, that's an important thing with, with layering. You know, last week when we did the wolf and the moon, that was a bit more obvious because we didn't have holes through. Everything was layered on top of everything else. Um, and then we put the, the piece of sheer cloth over the very top. Um, <clears throat> so, it, you know, it's something to think about. Even if you're doing something that doesn't represent anything actual at all, you can think about how your layers, how, how you want them to play within the piece, you know, if you want them to dominate or if you want them to be in the background. And although cloth is minusculely thin, you know, it's, it's microscopic, no, it's not microscopic, you know, it's very thin, <laughs> it's very thin. Um, still, there's a visual difference between what's in front and what's behind, even with thin stuff like cloth. So it's just something to, you know, something that occurred to me. Yeah, one of these weeks we'll do a little landscape and I'll talk in more detail about perspective. I mean, it's something you you hear in sort of, you know, other forms of art, painting and, and so on. But it's it also applies to cloth. Cloth art, shall we call it. This is quite nice to stitch through this oak shot. I don't have a lot of it because it's new cloth. I literally have scraps. Um, and I don't buy new cloth. I prefer to use some, um, you know. Those of you that have been here a while will know. I prefer to use old, old clothes and linens and so on. But I do have some scraps of new cloth from when I used to buy new cloth and also from when I used to teach people who bought new cloth and then I would um, forage their bins at the end of the day. <laughs> so I'll just come around this side and then the next thing I'm going to do is baste the moon on into the middle. Now when you're choosing your, your sizes of circles, if you're, you know, if you're all fancy you've, and you've got a compass, <laughs> you could um, draw yourself two circles of the actual exact size that you wanted on paper and cut them out and then you know use your paper as templates but you could even compass directly onto the cloth if you had a, a suitable um, drawing implement that worked on the cloth with a compass oh dear that's happened well do you know what I'm going to do because I'm slapdash I'm just going to pull that to the back and let it hang there um, okay so now I need to put my moon on so you see I've left a cor corolla or corona not sure which, um, 
it's not quite a quarter of an inch around, I suppose. And it's a bit wonky, you know me, it's always wonky. Um, it, your your um, ring of yellow, <laughs> I'm not going to keep saying it because I really can't remember which one it is. I did see, do some reading about solar eclipses because last week, um, and I'm aware I've started a sentence and not finished, I will finish it. Um, and that was another one started and not finished. And another one. Stop, Catherine. Um, yeah. Last week I said there'd been one manned, manned landing on the moon, which was utterly and totally rubbish. There have actually been six. So apologies for that erratum, they say, don't they, when they make a mistake in a book or something. Um, do I need to pin that so it stays in the middle? No. So I'm just going to do exactly the same thing around the edge of my black moon. I'm just going to come about an eighth of an inch in um, and just do the same invisible basting. And now I can't remember any of my sentences. Oh yes, I made a mistake about the number of lunar landings. Um, a couple of people told me in the comments, there was one, one lady in particular who said the only reason she knew was because her husband is a space geek. Um, so yeah, I do apologise <laughs> for saying something that was not right. Um, so yeah, I really will look up Corolla and Corona and make sure I put the correct thing on the screen. And what were the other sentences I started saying now? Oh, if anything, if there was anything important when I'm editing, <laughs> I put it then. Because what I do is I, I make these videos. I don't, I haven't made this piece before. I haven't practiced, you know, I've just, I have the idea and I, I might fiddle about with the squares of cloth to get the colours right and so on, but I don't make the whole thing and then come and make it again for you. I just, do you see there it's starting to fray a bit, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, so I, yeah, I, I have the idea. I, I, and sometimes I have the idea of the technique. Um, and then I think of a way to show you the technique, how we can represent it. Sometimes like the, the cloth tail, the, the story comes first, like it did this week. The story is the story of the solar eclipse. And then I think, what techniques can I use to represent that? And sometimes both things kind of come together and feed off each other. So, In case you're interested in how I come up with all this stuff. Now I can't actually see how far around I am. I'm going to look on the back. Oh, I need one more. Do you see? Do you see? Do you see? I'll just do one more little stitch in there. I'm sorry you can't see black on black, but... Um, I hope you know by now, or you might be new here, um, how to do the... I, I call it the invisible base because I learnt it from Jude Hill, from seeing Jude Hill do it, who I mentioned in my little introduction. Um, but it's been... this stitch has been around since medieval times. Uh, and in, in tailoring, garment making. And it's known there as the prick stitch. And um, there are pieces in the Victorian Albert Museum for whom I used to work in the 90s. I used to be in public relations, of all things. And um, I work for the Victorian Albert Museum, and they have very extensive... It's in London, in case you don't know. Um, they have very extensive collections of historical garments, and there you'll see uh, jackets, for example, from as long ago as the um, 17th century, possibly earlier. That are uh, where the lining's sewn in using this exact stitch, brick stitch. But for me, Jude Hill came up with this application, as far as I know. So that's why I always credit her. Um, okay, so now I'm going to start my stacked running stitch. Now you could use variegated thread; it gives a nice effect. I don't have a lot of variegated thread, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take one strand of this orange. And I'm not going to be a lazy tailor. We had that discussion a couple of weeks ago about taking too long a thread. And there are many wonderful expressions in different languages. But in English, it's the, a lazy tailor takes a long thread. Um, the laziness comes from the, then you don't have to re-thread your needle so often. So anyway, so I'm going to take two <laughs> non, 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 not too long threads, the same length of my entire six strands. Of, this is just normal embroidery floss. And then I'm going to take one strand of each colour. 
Um, and this is something that happens a lot when I'm stitching from my Oort's tin, you know my, you know my Oort's tin. Not much in it because I've been using quite a lot. If there's only one strand left, I might, because I always like to stitch with two strands, I might combine it with another strand of a similar or even a completely different colour, just to use up the odd ends. But if you want to give the impression of a variegated thread and you haven't got variegated thread, you can just take two colours together and stitch with those. You could, if you wanted it thicker, you could take you could take two of one and one of the other, or two of each, you know. Oh no, that's too fine a needle, I'm going to have to get that black out of there. Because I want this one. There we go. So, there are different ways of doing this. Um, you can either make your stitches in columns as you come round. We're going to sort of represent the light of the sun. Um, or what I prefer to do is um, just do a line of running stitch first. And I'm going to go and hold it up, make sure it's focused. Yeah. I'm going, do you see where I'm coming up? I'm just just outside or roughly in the same place where I put my invisible base, but just not so close to the edge that I damage the edge. If you wanted to do, you know, needle turn, a plie, a plie UK, and turn the edge under, you know, if that's something you know how to do, you want to do that to have a, a cleaner edge, you go for it, but I've just gone raw edge. So anyway, don't go too close to the edge because your edge might get all bubbled up. So I've just come up and now I'm just going to literally go round with a running stitch to start with. And I'm not going to be too particular about my spacing or anything. We're doing organic here. In fact, it's, sometimes it's even nice to deliberately make your stitches slightly different sizes and your spaces slightly different sizes. Just help if your thread doesn't knot. And because I'm just letting the two strands fall where they fall, so some of my stitches, the orange will be on top, some the yellow will be on top, some they'll be laying side by side. I'm just letting it happen. If you if you weren't really weren't happy with the raggedy raw edges, you could go and do a little um, overcast stitch all all round if you wanted to. But this is to me it's a representation, so I'm not not bothered about that. But everybody's different. You do you. I've come slightly further out than I started, but. Um, it's last week when I was talking about running stitch and I was talking about the differences between the lines. Um, you know, the different, if your lines are wider apart or closer together or, and so on. The same with, I mean, I'm, I'm just aware, I look back here and I see I'm way closer here than I am here. I'm going way out. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to creep back in. Anything other than take my stitches out. I'm just going to creep back in slowly. I'm not going to jump back in because that would be obvious. I'm just going to gradually work my way back in so that when I come back here I meet I meet my first stitch so it's it's you know to me that's all part of slow stitching it's just being aware of what you're doing just paying attention and then when I come here I'm going to kind of judge how many stitches and spaces can I fit so if I do a stitch there and a space and a stitch there that'll fit in nicely if it wasn't going to fit in nicely, I'd just adjust the length of my stitch, the length of my space. So I'm going to go through to the back with that last stitch. <coughs> so that's one line of running stitch. So I'm going to come back up. Right next, I'm going to come up closer to you just for this until you get the idea. I hope it's focused. Right next to that first running stitch I made. But outside it. Oh, come on, Catherine. I'm holding it at such a weird angle. Can you see where I'm coming up? I'm just checking it's still focused, yep. And now I'm just going to take another running stitch right next to it, but I'm going to make it 
ever so slightly smaller, not a huge bit smaller, just a teeny tiny bit. And then I'm going to come do the same with the next stitch, so I'm just ever so, ever so slightly smaller stitch. Almost imperceptibly smaller. Do you get the idea of how much smaller it is? And then I'm just going to do that all the way around. Okay, can I go back down again? So I'm just doing another row of running stitch, stacked, hence the name, directly next to, or on top of, if you imagine it's going that way, the previous line. And I prefer to do it this way, round and round, because the other way you could do it is you could do that whole column and then the next column and so on. And that, and stitched that way, that's used in um, Cantha embroidery and traditional Indian Cantha embroidery as a, a kind of filler stitch. So they'll stitch columns of stitches like that and leave a space in between as a filler stitch. Maybe we'll, I do want to do that kind of Cantha embroidery rather than the Cantha, you know, the, the simple running stitch lines to hold the layers together that I, I used in um, diversity week. I can't remember what number week it was, but you know, when we looked at the textile traditions that had inspired us. I did the regular Indian cantha with the layers of saris and um, you know with the parallel lines of running stitch which is so widely called these days whenever anybody does parallel lines of running stitch it's very often referred to cantha stitching. So I'm just working my way round and this is very wonderful and meditative, meditative, yeah, I said it right the first time, to do this stitch. So it takes a little bit of concentration, a little bit of precision, but I don't think it's very stressy precision. We're not aiming for exactness. Now, what you might find when you've got two strands of thread, whether they're the same colour or not, doesn't matter, um, is that one thread comes through under a slightly different tension to the other. Someone talked, asked me about that quite some time ago. Um, I'll do it there kind of deliberately. So do you see there that there's a little loop in the orange and the yellow's laying flat? You know when that happens? And that happens, all I do is tension a bit more than necessary and then pull the cloth back into place and then that's gone. So if that happens, that's what you can do if it bothers you. If it doesn't bother you, you can just leave it. So, and you know, I just do it as I go. You just, it, again, it's about paying attention as you go along. Being in the moment, and it's what makes slow stitch so therapeutic, because all you're thinking about is what you're doing. and not all the other stuff that might be in your head otherwise. So I can see that I'm coming back to the beginning, because there I've got my two stitches. So now I'm going to um, do with my third stitch, and I'm going to make it slightly smaller here in the beginning of the stitch, but then I might, just for fun, make it slightly bigger going the other way. Can you see that? So what that will do then, do you see this little stack of stitches is now getting a little slant to it. Apologies for my hands, I did say I've been doing eco printing. I've cleaned them as best I can. Um, and then with this one I might start a bit more towards where I'm coming out. I hope you can see. And then stack my running, st and then come back in a little bit short of where the previous stitch ended. And that will give the impression that this little stack of stitches is coming in this direction. So I'm going to play with that going all the way around. So just as I feel like it, make the stitch smaller, longer, start it slightly before the previous one or after, you know, just whatever you think as you stitch. And again, if that loopy thing happens, just pull it a bit tight and then pull it back. And then if you see here, that's quite a big gap. So therefore I might make the decision to make this stitch go going slightly longer 
and then I might start the next stitch slightly this way because I've got a big gap. So this is really an absorbing thing to do. Because you're, I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep my thumb out of the way. Because you can just play with the length of the stitches and you're just trying to line them up as best you can against each other. And if you find that um, you make too big a gap, you can just push another stitch in between. Nobody's going to go around and count your stitches in your little stacks to make sure that you've got the same number. Sorry about my... I, I just can't keep my thumb out of the way. So I hope you got the idea of that. You can obviously pause and go back and um, listen to the explanation again if you didn't. But I do think that when you do it, you will... Catherine? I, I just think I can't keep my thumb out of the way. I think my thumb is necessary. I think it's more than a habit. Yeah, because I'm using that obviously to tension the cloth. Um, yeah, I, I think you'll find that when you do it, you'll it'll all click, you know, you'll see, it'll become intuitive because you'll see what's happening um, and then you respond to that. And this stitch is also nice to, I'm going to have to get more thread in a minute, this stitch is also nice to combine with other um, stitches going over the surface. What I like to do as well is um, combine it with uh, the blanket stitch. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you saw, I made a video about blanket stitches in the slow stitches playlist. About using blanket stitch on the surface of the cloth as well. So you could do some stack running stitch and then you can do some blanket stitch, you know, in your spiral and you could do some straight stitching. You know, it, it's lovely to have a few stitches in your toolbox and then find ways to combine them. And that way I find I don't need many stitches in my toolbox. I talked last week about not using a lot of different stitches. This is still running stitch, a variation of it. I mean, I, the action I'm taking is the running stitch action. I'll cut that off where I was naughty as well. <laughs> um, and now I see I've put it down. I don't know where I was. I, I'm just going to start somewhere. Well, I will be able to see where I was because I'll see from my knot, but it really doesn't matter. So I'll get myself a bit of each again. A bit of yellow, a bit of yellow. Oh, old yellow, that made me think of old yellow. We were talking in the private Facebook group. Oh, yes, somebody did E.T., you know, the um, Elliot, the little boy with his bicycle and his, um, an E.T. in the basket flying across the moon. I can't remember who it was now. I'm sorry, was it Maria? No, it wasn't Maria. Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember who it was, but anyway, you know, that iconic image, which I do believe now is um, Spielberg's, you know, his, his logo, you know, on the introduction to his films. But I th I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. And um, then we started having a discussion. This is related to Old Yellow. <laughs> I'll get there. I'll get there. I'll get there in the end. Um, we started having a discussion about that. And I said, I remembered when I first saw that film when it first came out. You all, of course, you, you all, you all the other side of the pond will call it a movie, but I call it a film. Um, how, how, um, <coughs> oh, excuse me, <coughs> um, how uh, uplifting that scene is, you know, when, when all the kids' bikes take off into the air. And I can remember, I'm, I'm such a, a wussy wimp when it comes to anything like that. I, I cry at the drop of a hat. And that really got me going. And don't even get me started about when his little heart lights up again. I could cry now thinking about it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So we talked about that and films making us cry or not. And I, I do believe that was Maria. Hello, Maria. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm um, going to name and shame you. Um, saying that she remembered going to see that film with her younger sibling. I can't remember whether it was a sister or a brother. I think it was a sister. Um, and and many of her siblings' friends, and they were all crying, and she was her young, you know, very young as a child herself, kind of taking the mickey out of them for being such such crybabies. 
Um, and then we got to talking about Watership Down, which is a wonderful book by uh, Richard Adams, which was then made into an animated film. I'm sure many of you know and remember. Um, and about scenes in that that made us cry. So yeah, old yellow. <laughs> yeah, if you don't cry at old yellow, well, you know, some people just don't. My other half hardly ever gets emotional, you know, at films, but sometimes he will. And then he always says he's got something in his eye or, you know, a bit tongue in cheek, macho man. So yeah, let let me know in the comments if you cry at films. I can cry at an advert, you know, if there's an advert that's a bit moving. <laughs> if someone does something nice for somebody or, you know, it could, might be an advert for insurance or something like that and, and it might make, and it can make me cry. And I remember talking a long time ago about the original book and film that was made from the book of The Incredible Journey, not the Disney one where they talk, but the, the original one, I think it's from the 70s. Um, you know, the, the two dogs and the cat that make the journey. And about how I can, if I need to cry on command, <laughs> if ever that's necessary in my life. <laughs> um, I can, I just think of the closing pages of that book. In fact, now I'm filling up. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. Mm. Control yourself, Catherine. People don't want to see you cry or hear you cry. So you see that this is quite time consuming, but that's why we do this, for the pleasure of it. Um, and I'm really staggering and spacing my stitches any old how. And I think these two threads are different. They're both cotton embroidery floss, but I think one is DMC and I think the other one, the yellow one, I think is DMC because it's got a slight sheen to it and it's very smooth. And I think the orange one, which I've tea dyed, I'm pretty sure, is um, was a, a cheaper one. I think it's one that came out of a kit. You know, sometimes you get those kits and they've got the threads in and they're cheaper threads. And that is why I think they're not behaving together as well as they could. So although they're both cotton there produce slightly differently, but I don't mind. I use anything. So my plan is, um, when I've done a nice little stack of um, the running stitches, that I'm going to then do another kind of stitch around the outside, but I'm not there yet. I'm just going round and round, round and round the sun. This year I will have been round the sun 59 times and I just love that way of looking at birthdays, talking about how many times you've been round the sun. Because I like to feel connected to nature and nature is obviously goes beyond the woods and the plants and the fields and the animals on the planet with us. Nature is the entire universe, isn't it? So if I think that I, me, my little, my little personage has been round the sun coming up in June, my birthday is, I'll have been round the sun 59 times. That is how I like to look at birthdays. And you see, if I'm like here, it, all my stitches are coming in this direction. I think now I'm going to make them go in the other direction. So I'm going to, I've come up just, just inside that stitch, just, just you know, on the inside of the stitch, on the, the left of it as I'm looking at it. And I'm going to go down just slightly past it. And if you go and look at Miriam's beautiful work, she covers whole surfaces of cloth with this stitching um, and uses all different coloured threads and absolutely wonderful. Do I really recommend that you go and check out her Instagram. I 
I'm not sure if, if she's got a website, if you're not on Instagram. I'll have a look, and if she's got a website, for those of you that don't do Instagram, I'll, I'll um, link that as well. Stella snoring her head off. The Stella, I'm quite sure many of you know, means star. And um, you do have to be careful with your tension. Do you see, I, I'm pulling my tension a little bit tight, so it's starting to lift up. Um, I shouldn't have, I should have been more careful. I'm sure you heard that. <laughs> my little star is snoring. Um, yeah, and she's called Stella because she she is junior dog. She's much younger than the other dog, my big dog. And my big dog is called Sirius. I think I've mentioned this before. Um, and Sirius is the, the dog star, Canis Major, which is the brightest scar, star in the southern sky. Um, the southern sky in the northern hemisphere. I'm not sure in the southern hemisphere if you see Sirius. I know constellations, you know, you see different stars. I must look into that more. Since, since making these videos and connecting with um, so many people down under, sorry, <laughs> the awful accent, it's made me think much more about differences between what we see in the in the different hemispheres of the of the earth. Fred, Fred, hair. Fred, Fred's not here. He's outside because it's sunny today, warm and sunny. So he had a little walk around the woods with us, and now I suspect he's sleeping on um, under. Whoopsie, under one of the the hangers of one of the barns. There's a great big bale of straw that I got. Um, a couple of years ago from a local farmer and I use it to mulch my garden uh, so it's there under the hanger so it doesn't get rained on and uh, Fred Fred likes to sleep on it because then he's he's up high so he's you know in a dominant position over the village um, and he can see all the comings and goings there aren't many comings and goings here to be honest um, and he's comfy on the straw. See, this thread, these threads are really doing that divide -y thing. I'm going to go up to the tails and just make sure they're together again. They're having a falling out. Now, if you did find, as I'm finding, that um, this area of cloth where I'm doing quite heavy stitching is... Um, puckering, you know, being pulled in much more than the middle, which doesn't have any. There's, well, one thing you can do is put less tension in your stitches to start with, but that's too late now and I'm certainly not pulling all that out. Uh, the other thing you can do is go back and put some stitching in here to balance. So you could, for example, go onto the moon and do just some seed stitching or just some some running stitch or you know spiral running stitch something like that and that will flatten that out as well I think I can squeak a couple more stitches out of this little bit of thread before I get a new bit go through to the back so do you see the movement there now in the stack running stitch because they're not, I'm not making neat even columns, I'm having them all go higgledy piggledy. And you can play with that, you can do it random, you see on the back. Um, you can play with the lines that you make and the directions they go in. I had another piece that I had laying here to show you and now I can't see it anymore. Where is it? Um, because I, I was reminded, well, I was reminded it's hanging on my design wall. Where is it? Oh, it's behind me. It's behind you. If you're British and you know about pantomime. <laughs> um, which is this piece. Sorry. If you haven't been watching me and you're stitching along, look up. I'm showing you something. <laughs> um, I, thought, I thought about this because uh, Tracy in uh, At Moon and Sixpence is doing a series inspired by Sacred Geometry. Uh, I'm not going to go into that because that's really off topic, but it reminded me of this piece of mine that I, is a piece I made and it hasn't yet become anything. 
um, because it's the circle with the segment cut out. But what I wanted to show you, this is all stacked running stitch here. So, you know, this was done much more carefully than I'm doing it now, much smaller stitching and really exaggerating the lines that I made with the stitches. And then when I came to the end, and that's this is what I'm going to do here, off the little ends I did some split back stitch. So I'll do that in a minute on this piece. But I just wanted to show you it done more, more, you know, cons in more considered way. And this also is stack running stitch. And this is this piece, this section here is very much in the style of the Indian canthal that I talked about, where it's used as a filler stitch. Um, in leaves and things like that, the canther embroidery. So I just wanted to show you that. <laughs> and um, also do go and check out Tracy. I'll link her channel down below. She's following along with this project. She's doing lots of um, videos showing her, her take on it and other things that she's making. And I just find her delightful to listen to. Um, and her, what you know, seeing her thought processes and so on. Oh, I don't need more, I've still got. Where's my orange gone? Okay, who's stolen my orange? Which one of you has taken my bit of orange thread? Did it get stuck to the back of that? No. Is it stuck to my clothing? No, well that's a mystery. So I will have to get another bit. I didn't use it all because I've got some yellow still laying there. Well, the thread, the thread pixies have been in and pinched my thread. I'll have to get another bit. It's not going to be the same length. How irritating. I'll find it in a minute when I'm done, or in a bit when I'm done. No, it's shorter. I'm going to have to cut that. I'm not, I'm not going to cut that. I'm going to get another bit of that. Um, or shall I? No, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take that as a sign. I'm going to stop with the orange and carry on with just the yellow and mix it up a bit. I'm going to take two strands of the yellow. So the outer part of my rays will be less orange, which is kind of, you know, I was going to say scientifically accurate, but it's nowhere near, <laughs> you know what I mean. If you look at, I'm thinking of a flame of a fire, which, you know, the sun is on fire. Um, and how the inner part of the flame is much redder and as it goes out towards the outer part of the flame it's yellow. I'm just trying to justify the fact that I've lost my bit of orange thread. <laughs> um, yeah, stop looking for it. I, I just can't let it go. I can't let it go. It'll turn up. Okay, so I'm going to go on with just the yellow. I'm going to do a couple more rounds of this stitch and then I'm going to do the split back stitch. And then I do think I'm going to do some um, stitches in the moon. I think the solar eclipse starts right down in the south into Mexico, um, somewhere in the middle of the day. And then it will go up through Texas and the Midwest. My American geography is not very good. You know, I have a vague idea about where you all are in relation to the, you know, your enormous country. <laughs> um, but so if I'm saying things that aren't right, I do apologize. Um, you know, I know the basics. I know New York is the East and LA is the West and all that. Um, uh, but if you gave me a, a map of the states with no no names written on of the actual states, I'd probably get a lot of them right, but all the ones in the middle I wouldn't get right. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, so I think so. the solar eclipse, and then it travels right a, a great swathe right through the middle of America, can see it, and I think even right down into the... Um, some of the provinces of Canada. I think New Brunswick, which is over on the eastern coast. I do know that because I lived there when I was a, quite a small child for a couple of years. Um, but yeah, I very much look forward to going online later and um, or on Monday. You, you all know that I don't actually, I can't make these videos on the day because uploading a video of an hour and a half takes up to 20 hours. 
Um, so I don't even dare leave it until Sunday anymore. So I try and upload them on Saturday so that I can be sure on Sunday that they're all correct and right and there's no no permanent captions. Do you remember that awful week when I put permanent captions on and then I turned, took the video off again and then you will panic because it just disappeared, you know? Anyway, I'm still learning. Hopefully I'm getting better all the time at doing this. Um, so yeah, I'm, but anyway, I'm very much looking forward to seeing all the excitement of the solar eclipse. I hope everybody's safe and sensible when they're travelling around to places. I know some places are going to be absolutely inundated with visitors. Um, so all I'm doing now is I'm gradually, because I think I'm coming to the outside of where I want to do my stitching, I'm going to gradually make my stitches smaller so they come almost to little points. But gradually, gradually, and still making sure I'm spacing them um, cattywampus. It's not cattywampus, is it? Staggered. Cattywampus is much more um, diagonal. That's not what I mean. I mean staggered. I just like saying cattywampus. I read something when I was having a little read about the, this, uh, the solar eclipse, and it, it struck me as a very American thing to say. <laughs> and, and I'm saying this with, you know, love and affection. I'm absolutely not taking the mickey out of you all. Um, but I thought it was, it made me chuckle. And they said that the, it was a news outlet, I can't remember which one, but they said that, that this solar eclipse is going to cause as much excitement as 50 Super Bowls. <laughs> I just found it amusing. Like, you know, excitement of a Super Bowl is a measure. <laughs> so then you can say 50 times that. Maybe they did have, maybe they were, you know, going by how many people watch the Super Bowl or how much traveling goes on if there's a Super Bowl of people wanting to go to the Super Bowl. You know, it's very possible there was some, some logic to it, but it just, it made me chuckle. The excitement of 50 Super Bowls. I just love the movement in this stitching. And it's only running stitch, it's just where you're putting it. That's the only thing that's making it look special. Not that the, you know, you know that I think the normal, regular running stitch is special. But I have been pulling too tightly. Just be careful with your tension. In my defence, I think it was because my threads were... <laughs> making excuses for myself again! I think it was because my threads were um, separating, because I had the two different threads. Seems to be going better now, I've only got the one thread. So maybe that's something to bear in mind if you do the thread combining. Um, just be aware of what threads you're putting with what. Oh, I did too big there, I'm supposed to be getting smaller. Concentrate, Catherine. So yeah, so today is actually Friday for me. Um, because this afternoon my daughter's coming home for the weekend. She didn't come home last weekend, which was Easter weekend, because she had plans with her friends. Um, she's at university um, in Bordeaux, which is about two, two and a half hours away by road, but she'll come home on the train and I'll get her from the station. Um, so anyway, so she's coming home for the weekend. Um, and. Um, So I wanted to be able to spend time with her, so I'm doing this today for me as Friday um, so that I can get it all ready for you all for Monday and spend some time with Lily this weekend. I'm just getting smaller and smaller as I go around. I'm 
until I get my until my stitches are nearly a point, you know, just tiny. What is it about the sound? I don't think you can hear her now, just tell her she's not snoring anymore, she's heavy breathing. But she's obviously having a lovely restful sleep. That sound of somebody else having a restful sleep puts me to sleep. I'm sure that's the same for many of you. I won't, I'll try not to go to sleep. If you, if you think I've gone to sleep, if my hands stop moving and I stop talking, just shout to wake me up. I think I can sneak a couple more from this bit of thread. There we go. Um, some people have asked me about um, these weekly projects, how I, um, how I plan, you know, if I've got a list of all the projects for the year already in my head. No, I haven't. Well, I hope that there is a list somewhere in my head, but it's not an actual list, you know, week 15 this, week 16 that. It's not that, I'm not that organised. And I wouldn't want to be either. Um, because I like to come up with things that are relevant like this, you know, it's to do with something that's happening in the world, um, but also things that I'm doing or thinking about myself in my own, you know, private, I don't mean my private, private, but, you know, my, my personal slow stitching that I'm doing. Um, or something I might read about or something I might see going by or... Um, I might look in a, a stitch journal of mine, of something, and, and then it triggers something in my brain, and then my brain goes off on its, you know, tangents, and then something comes out at the end of it. <laughs> so, basically, in answer to the people that have asked about my planning, there isn't any. <laughs> it just comes, it just, you know. And the other thing that people ask is, am I worried that I won't have enough? For, the f for all the weeks. Um, well, no, I'm not worried about that, really. I've done so many stitch journals over the years and um, so many different things. My, and that's another thing about stitch journals as well. Not only the pleasure of making, you know, I don't make them, tie them up and put them away and never look at them again. I then go back and look at them every so often to inspire myself from my own work, if that makes sense, rather than going and looking at Pinterest, or I mean, I do do that as well, you know, or, or social media or anything, and looking at what other people are doing, you can go back and look at what you've done, and that, and not necessarily to copy that exactly, but it gives a jumping off point for something else. So yeah, I don't, I don't plan these. Uh, until the week. Sometimes I have an idea, like there's a few things that I think, right, I definitely want to share that with the lovely people. We're going one week, we'll do that. But I don't yet know what week that'll be. Um, and I have a little list of a few things like that, you know, things that I specifically want to do. Like the, the English paper piecing week, the hidden histories, that was something that I really wanted to do because that was the first kind of sewing I did really. Um, so I wanted to share that. And like I said at the beginning, it's sometimes it's a theme I want to share or a story I want to share. Um, and then other times it's it's a technique I want to share and I'll build the story around it. So I hope that is, a, you know, that answers those of you that have asked me about that. I think I've also already mentioned that there are 53 Mondays in 2024. And I hope you're not going to all be cross with me when you've made a 52-page journal like I, like I um, showed you, <laughs> and you're a page short. Uh, we'll come up with some some way of adding the 53rd page when we get to it. Right, I think I'm pretty much got tiny stitches now. How can I show you? You see right at the very end there, it's almost a dot. It's almost the size of the invisible base stitch. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start doing split back stitches in a wiggly way. So you just you start with a running stitch and I'm going to try and sort of audition what direction I want my line to go in, maybe that way, to get a bit of movement into it. So I'm just going to take a smallish running stitch in that direction and then a bit of loose thread on there from the cloth. And then I'm going to come back into that stitch, just slightly into it. And because it's two strands, you can split the strands, but I don't stress over it. I just go in. I'm just going to tension it slightly more. I just go in wherever. But ever so slightly back into the stitch. And then move forward beyond where you came out there in the direction you want to go in. And smoosh it with your thumb. <laughs> and then I might do the same thing again. Slightly back, can you see? I hope you can see. Slightly back into the previous stitch and then forward. And I'm making the lines go wiggly. I do get the feeling we've done this before. I can't remember when. Was it Was it with the feather? So back into the previous stitch and then I'm going to make my line wiggle the other way. Like that. And shall I go one more? Just go one more. And then when you want to finish your line, you simply come back into the previous stitch and take your needle through to the back of your work. You see? So now I want to do the same here, because I'm up here, I'm going to just work it back the other way. You could jump down, you know, if that made more sense to you. The stitches will look slightly different in each, in the two different directions, but I don't really think it's that much of a problem. So I'm just going to do the same thing. And I'm I'm going I don't want really them to be all parallel, so I'm going to deliberately make them go wibbly wobbly. And probably deliberately make them not all come out to the same point so that they're more <laughs> I can't think of another word. Organic looking. Natural looking. Wonky. Wonky, wonky. Is that okay? Is that clear now? Can I put, put it back down? <laughs> May I? May I put it back down? When I used to ask to leave the table, I say, can I leave the table? That was my Auntie Audrey, who I've mentioned before, who was a stickler for manners. Who said, can I leave the table? She would say, you are able to leave the table. What you mean is, may you leave the table? No wonder I'm a pedant when it comes to language. So that's that line. They are a bit parallelish, you see, but I'm going to come back up here and make this one even wonkier to compensate. Again, it's that kind of in your mind's eye, visualizing on the cloth the line that you want to take. And um, I've said before, I, I don't tend to draw lines unless I want something exact like a circle or something of that kind. I just, you could, with your needle, if you kind of go like that, I want to go there, and you sort of imprint in your brain that line. That makes sense. If you want to draw lines, you do you. I'm just telling you what I do and don't do. So let's come up here somewhere. And let's come this way. Um, my daughter Lily has expressed an interest in um, journal making. So maybe if we get time this weekend, I'm not sure we will because she's only home for um, this afternoon and two more days. She goes back on Sunday. Um, but if we get time, it would be nice to be able to have a little play with her here in the studio and get her started making a journal. Um, I haven't put anything, well, obviously there was the stitch journals, 
but I do also make um, junk journal-y type things. I've talked a little bit, I think, here and there about the Forager's Journal, which is my piece for the upcoming exhibition in, in uh, Nailsworth, which is very much in a junk journal style from an old book with recycled papers and so forth. There will be um, some videos coming here on the main channel about that. I've already put one video on my Kofi of me making the wrap for that. Um, but yeah, uh, making junk journals with a kind of stitchy aspect to them will be something that I will get into at one point because a few people have asked me about junk journaling because I mentioned it here and there. Um, or journaling, art journal, junk journal, I don't know. I think technically a junk journal should be made from junk. <laughs> Clues in the name. But I know that that can, you know, be a divisive thing to say. I've heard or seen some quite heated discussions over that terminology, so I'm not going to get involved in that. Um, art journals, to me, can be any number of things. Can be, you can buy a journal and make art in it and then it's an art journal, or you can make a journal in an artistic way and then that's an art journal. Um, and then a stitch journal is a journal into which you put your stitch, so that could also be a bought journal that you then just stitch, put stitch pieces in, or you could stitch into it, and so on. Anyway, all of this rambly witter is just to say, at one point I will get more into different types of journal. Um, talking of journals, I just wanted to clarify in my introductory thing piece to camera, um, I talked about this coming Wonky Wednesday that I was making a piece for my journal, I just want to be clear that is not as part of this weekly, um, the, you know, the Monday, the Monday weekly slow stitch project. That is for my wonky log cabin journal, which is for wonky Wednesday, which is, I mean, I'm making a weekly video on wonky Wednesday, but um, it's not about making a journal in the same way that this is, you know, a weekly. I hope that makes sense. I, I know in the beginning when wonky Wednesday first came out, there was some confusion. Some people thought that they were supposed to make the Wednesday pieces also and put them in this journal. D don't do that because, you know, 52 weeks is more than enough for one journal. And I know some of you are making multiple journals or, or other, you know, wall hangings or so forth. Right, I now need... I had another bit of yellow. I'm sure I did. Did I use my other bit of yellow? Really, I think there is a little invisible fairy going around pinching my threads. I must have used it. But I know I didn't use that other bit of orange because um, there was some yellow left and they were the same. <laughs> oh dear. Come here, naughty. It's, it's that feeling. I get so frustrated sometimes, I'm sure many of you have it, when you put something somewhere and I know I've, ju I've just forgotten, you know, that's the bottom line, <laughs> I've just forgotten, but you put something somewhere and then you go back for it and you're sure, you feel 100% certain that you'd put it in a certain place and it's not there anymore. And if someone else is in the house, obviously you can accuse them or you can accuse a pet. <laughs> any innocent creature that can't defend itself. But if you're home alone, and you know it's not a pet because it was too high up or whatever. Um, oh, sorry, I'm splitting my stitch there in an unpleasant light. There we go. Um, you know that it can't, nobody's moved it. And it's, it's just simply that you've put it somewhere different and you forgot. But you know that feeling of going around the house, I, I hope it's not only me, looking for something thinking it should be somewhere where you left it and it's not there. And then eventually you do find it and um, you go, duh, yeah, I do remember putting it there now. <laughs> Please reassure me that it's not only me. There's also that thing where you go out, you go into a room for something, like, you know, say the kitchen, for example. You go into the kitchen for something and you get there and you can't remember what you went in there for. Um, and then the thing to do is go out of the room and go back in because there is some kind of theory that it's going through the doorway triggers your memory. 
So you go into the kitchen and you, oh, what have I come in here for? And um, you go out of the kitchen and you go back in and then you remember. Anyway, try it if you don't know about it. See if it works. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> the worst thing is going upstairs for something. I did it this morning, actually. I went downstairs for something because, as I said, I had to move all my equipment to make the eco-printing video. Um, oh, I've done that wrong now. I'm back up there. Um, so I went, I brought everything up. Now I've got a knot. There you go. Um, I brought everything upstairs and, um, or what I thought was everything, and um, set everything up. And then I didn't have, I can't remember what it was now. Oh, I didn't have my, um, I didn't have my applique pins, which as it turns out, I haven't used. So I went back down for them. And then I came back up again and um, I made the piece to camera. And then I sat down at my desk and I didn't have my needle cushion. <laughs> And there wasn't a needle in my applique pin cushion, and there wasn't the right kind of needle in my biscornu, which stays on my desk. So I had to go back downstairs again. <laughs> anyway, I've had my exercise for the morning, running up and down the stairs. My usual system is I have a basket, which is, I call it my up and down basket. So I, if I'm downstairs or upstairs, I take my basket with me and then if I'm in my studio and I want to take things down to stitch on in the evening or whatever, I throw things in the basket to take down. And then downstairs I do the reverse, you know, things that need to come back up here for whatever reason. Um, I put them in the, in the basket. That's, that's, my, that's my system. <laughs> um, and, um, but yeah, the system failed this morning. I think it's because Lily's coming and... I was um, under a bit of a time constraint because so I didn't want to rush this part of it. I didn't want to feel rushed and I didn't want you to think I was being rushed. So I did the rushing before I started. And, you know, when you try and... What's that expression? More haste, less speed. See my oak shot fraying there as well. I shall just trim that off in a minute and be fine. See my little sun rays. Oh dear. Well, after I said it didn't do it, it started doing it. Oh, naughty, naughty. And if it really starts happening excessively, for I don't know what reason, it'll be to do with its tension somewhere. It's tension in the stitching. Um, you can go back to the tails and just even them up a bit. This could be, if I was, you know, more sensible, the kind of stitching that should really be done in a hoop. I do have hoops, but I just nearly never use them. Um, but that would certainly help with the tension if it was bothering you. I would, of course, had to have, well, I, I've, I don't know if I've got a tiny, tiny hoop um, that this would fit in. Otherwise, you'd have to baste it onto a bigger piece of cloth firmly and then put that in the hoop. Or start with a bigger piece of cloth and then trim it off afterwards. But my um, my solution to tensioning, you know, tension issues caused by too much stitching is just to put more stitching. <laughs> Whoopsie. When I say whoopsie like that, I hear my 
I nearly said my little boy, he's now, he'll be 22 this year. He'll be 22 next month. That was when he was, when he was a little boy and you fell over or spilt something, whatever, he would say, whoopsie, <laughs> in exactly that tone. I've gone quiet. I haven't fallen asleep. I'm still sit stitching. Stella's still um, heavy breathing. And I'm just working my way around the sun. I do remember at school that that was one of the first sort of numbers I remember learning that the sun is 93 million miles away. And I still only know it in miles. I don't know it in kilometers. I can't do the sum in my brain. A kilometre is about five-eighths of a mile, but I'm not going to work it out now. It must be a hundred-something kilometres, something like that, I would imagine. Anyway, I do re distinctly remember learning 93 million miles, and then it's one of those numbers that sticks in the brain. Like being English, 1066 is a number that sticks in the brain, which was the year that the French invaded um, the island of Britain. William the Conqueror, 1066. And with whom my father's ancestors probably entered Britain. At school we did a project about it wasn't, you know, fancy like nowadays. You've got Ancestry.com and all those websites where you can look up. There weren't websites when I was at school. At school, a website was... When I was at school, a website was a place where a spider built its home. Um, but yes, I do remember uh, our history teacher, Mr Potton, talking about um, names the history of just of names, you know, not your own particular family. And my surname, Chambers, is a French name. Chambre is French for room, or more specifically, bedroom. Chamber is obviously an English word for a kind of room that we use in specific circumstances. In the olden days, they would have said a bedchamber. Um, when I was at school, they used to call me Potty from Chamber Pot. That was not pleasant. Anyway, um... Yeah, so Mr. Potton told told me about my name, Chambers, which is my father's name, her father's family name, that it's from... Um, oh, sorry, I've banged the table and made you wobble. It's from the, the French Chambre, and probably... Uh, it's like a Chamberlain, I think. Uh, it was the person that was responsible for the financial affairs of a, a large estate or home. Apparently, so uh, maybe a distant, dim and distant ancestor came over with, or went over, I'm not there anymore, I'm here, went over with William the Conqueror and was a um, responsible for the affairs of <laughs> an estate. And from that person I descended, I don't know. Um, but yeah, there must be French ancestry somewhere. <laughs> With a name like Chambers. Thread off. So I'm doing my split back stitch. I'm wiggling about. Got a couple more rays to do. I don't think I'm going any further with that one because I'm quite close to the edge. My cloth is really rumply. You can also block things when I used to make proper quilts or, you know, proper things, wall hangings and so forth, you dampen, you, it's like blocking a jumper if you're a knitter or a sweater or, you know, a knitted garment. Basically you dampen it, you pin it out onto a surface in the form that you want it and you let it dry like that. I'm not blocking this, it won't surprise you to know. I do sometimes block my knitting, it depends on what it is. Uh, 
but yeah do be aware of your tension if it's going to bother you do consider a hoop if you think it's going to bother you and just be more careful than i've been i am going to in a minute put some stitching into the middle of my moon when i've done this last ray of sun little ray of sunshine um, I think Miriam, who I've referred to a couple of times, um, I think she stitches in a hoop. I'm not 100% sure, but I think she does. I know that Jude Hill doesn't really use a hoop. And also, it's if you stitch onto a sturdier surface, then the tension is less of an issue. So if I had thicker cloths, um, Uh, doing this stitch on a single layer of cloth, uh, you would almost certainly have to use a hoop if you didn't want it to be all numb. Um... Oh, don't get a knot. No, there's definitely a knot. Do you know what? I'm in that kind of mood. It can stay there. <laughs> I'm going to do another back stitch to anchor that end. <clears throat> get that off. Get a bit of my black back. <clears throat> Get that off. I can hear a little robin chirping outside. I've got three strands of this, this but this is um, darning cotton, vintage darning cotton. Um, and it's slightly finer than the embroidery um, floss, so. I'm going to use three strands. What am I going to do? I think I'm going to just stitch some running stitch, <coughs> excuse me, around the outside. <coughs> or not right up to the outside because of the fraying that I mentioned earlier. About an eighth of an inch in. Um, or am I going to do, oh, I'm going to do seed stitch. See, I change my mind. Change my mind. Which will just give some texture. Oh, I can hear a black cat singing outside in the trees. You can't see this because it's black on black, but I'm just doing big seed stitches. If I bring it closer, maybe you can see the action. Um, I've done seed stitching in other videos. I did a lot of it in the in the um, week nine, which was the nine patch. And I think, yeah, there is. I did a whole video in the Slow Stitches playlist, if you're not sure about Seed Stitch. And this I do do in two movements, in and out. And here I'm actually tensioning it a bit more than I normally would, probably, in an attempt to balance the, the tension of the step running stitch. I can't even see, so you've got no chance. But I didn't really want the stitching to be visible as a element. I just wanted it to balance the texture. And it gives a, a bit of visual interest without being too, too bright. <sighs> Sorry, I had to blow a bit of fluff off. off the surface so it didn't get trapped behind the stitch. Um, something else I've been working on is um, a pocket. Uh, I shared recently, a week or so ago, a little video about my trip to England and that in it was my friend Maria's lovely exhibition. Um, and I showed you some of the things I'd bought when I was there. And one of them was a book called The Pocket, which is about the history of women's of pockets in that women's clothing didn't and still doesn't in many cases have pockets. And the solution that, that women took um, in earlier centuries to make detachable pockets that tied on. And I've just become absolutely 
fascinated with the shape of them. And I've, I'm in the process of stitching one myself. And um, I just need to get my head around the construction because I'm just going by the pictures in the book, you know. And I'd rather do that. I'd rather do that than go looking online to see how someone else has done it. I'd rather look at the, the original historical thing or photos of it is all I've got and um, try and work it out myself from that. So I'm busy with that and when I've got my head around that I will share. If you feel like making your own pocket because I think, you know, even today where we do wear trousers, some of us, and we do um, have pockets in our clothing and dresses with, you know, pinafore dresses or whatever with pockets in. And, and I know also I have bought skirts in charity shops that I've liked without pockets and I've added pockets. Because I, I just can't, you know, I have to have pockets. I'm a, I'm a forager, I'm a picker up of things. One needs pockets to put things in. So I do think I will use my pocket. Um, when I've made it. Uh, but yeah, look out for that coming up as well. Just need more hours in the day. I'm quite pleased that the older I get, the less sleep I seem to need. So that, that buys me a couple more hours. <laughs> I used to sleep a lot when I was younger. It used to be that if I didn't have eight hours, I couldn't function. It's funny, isn't it? You'd think it would be the other way around. But now I can get away with maybe six hours. And I'm often up very early before anybody else, when I'm not the only one here. And first thing is when I try and have a look through the Facebook group and Instagram and read the comments here under the videos and catch up with you all. I try and do that first thing and last thing and in the day and sometimes I manage um, a little look in between. Just need a couple more, I think. Is there one there already? No, it's really hard to see. Okay, do pig, that'll do pig. So if you look now on the back, you can see that because um, there's stitching here and stitching here, the bit in between is still a bit floofy, poofy and floofy. So you could then, let's do that. How are we doing? I'm not clock watching, only that because of having to get Lily. I'm just going to put a line of yellow around um, the Corona slash Corolla. I think it's Corolla with an L. Anyway, I'm still guessing. I'm probably wrong. After my faux pas about the number of lunar landings, I don't trust myself anymore. I must look things up. The trouble is, you, when, you, when you think you know something, it's difficult to fact check it. You only really fact check things when you aren't sure if that makes sense. The danger comes when you think you're sure of something and you're not, you're wrong. But luckily I have all of you lovely people to put me right. I think I'm going to just go just on the yellow, just outside the moon. And this is basically my solution to anything, is just, just keep throwing stitches at it until it's right. And yellow on yellow again, so you probably can't really see, but again, it's not really visual. It's more just to change the texture of the, of the cloth a little bit. So I'm just coming around the outside. 
I don't mind those little fluffy bits sticking off there. To me, there's ugly fraying and there's beautiful fraying. I know some people don't like fraying at all. But, you know, it's an aesthetic, we're not all the same. So I'm nearly back to where I started. And um, I'm going to just come out and do another row, I think, in between. Another row, another, another round. So I'm just sort of bisecting the, the gap that I've now got between my line of stitching and where the purple starts. Somewhat-ish. You see that my, my um, yellow ring, <laughs> I'm not even going to try and remember what it is anymore. My yellow ring is um, not uniform in shape or in width. I'm not bothered one jot or iota. I was apparently bothered about the difference in tension in the cloth, so that I'm trying to do something about. For you, all those little decisions will be different because you will be different. And I can already feel in my hand that it's much, much more not uniform, but balanced. Let's call it balanced. Right. Last stitch. Take a slightly bigger stitch so I don't leave too big a gap between the last stitch and the first stitch. There we go. Okie dokie. So there it is, my little solar eclipse on my... When I really squidge it down, it lays flat. It lays flat enough. It's not bad. See? Is that on my finger? Do you know what? That's a bit of Dutch... Um, they call it Aunt Bite Cook breakfast cake. There's a kind with ginger in it that I love, and um, if my other half is driving back from his work in Germany and Holland, he brings me uh, Aunt Bite Cook, uh, my Dutch accent, uh, Miriam, sorry, Miriam's surname and Aunt Bite Cook. Machtelt, if you're watching, please don't laugh at my awful Dutch accent. <laughs> no, please feel free to laugh at my awful Dutch accent, it deserves it. But you all know what Aunt Bite Cook is, Machtelt, I'm sure, and all the other lovely Dutch ladies that watch me. And gentlemen. I don't know if there's any Dutch gentlemen watching me. I've never heard from any. Um, right, where are we? There's my wolfy wolf. Somebody somebody posted this morning and sent me um, the, the screenshot of it that they'd posted their version of mine. And someone had commented, is it the hand from the Adams family? <laughs> No, I can't unsee it. It's one of those, you know. Da -da -da -da. Ch -ch. I won't sing. I won't sing and drive you all away. <laughs> Made me laugh. Made me laugh and laugh and laugh. Right. Anyway, next page. Solar eclipse. Now I have to decide on a way up. Although it's, you know, vaguely symmetrical. It's not really. Um, do you know what I'm going to do as well, just for a change? I'm going to stitch it here so it flips out like that. How about that? Um, I need a bit of... What shall I use to sew it on with? I've got this purple silco. That'll do. That'll do, pig. Oh, I need my... You know what? You're all shouting it. What's coming? Giant paper clip. And I have to clip here or there because I need to stitch here. Make sure there's only one page. Oh, it's the middle of the signature. You can hear that stomping sound. That's the big dog turning round and round trying to get comfortable. He's up here again. 
I think I'll go in slightly actually. There we go. That's more centralised. Can you see? Can you see? So here we go. Just anchor it in the back of the tie knot in it. <laughs> oh dear, dear, dear. Tie a knot in your thread, anchor it in the back of the backing. And come back to the front. Again, make sure there's only one page. Sir, stop it. Sorry. Talking to the dog. Licking his foot. He needs a brush actually. It's, he's because it's suddenly got a bit warmer. He's losing hair enormously. And he's got quite thick hair. So he has to have a good brush. Stella, on the other hand, doesn't shed, so she doesn't need brushing. She just has to go to the lovely Christine to be um, groomed and clipped and so on every few weeks. But serious, needs a good brush. I might, I might delegate that task to Lily because she likes doing it. And um, I must admit, it does hurt my back these days to be He's too, I can't lift him and put him on a table. Please don't suggest that. He weighs 45 kilos. <laughs> I don't know what that is in pounds, but it's a lot. Um, so I have to sort of squat on the floor and lean over him and so on. And I like him to be comfortable because of his arthritis. So I end up with backache. I'll get Lily to do it. Right, come back up again, finish off. And... Um, I don't have a poem this week for the sun. That's a bit remiss of me. So I think I'm just going to simply put solar eclipse and the date. I think in a sense that's poetry enough. She said trying to get herself out of it, not having done her homework properly. Um, but I'm sure some of you will come up with lovely sun related poems and I look forward to seeing those. Um, while I look for my pencil, if you're not yet in the Facebook group and you'd like to be in, I, it's now set up automatic because it just got too much for me to manually go through all the applications. Um, and also Facebook is now sending people fr directly from Facebook, they're not coming only via here. And I really don't want it to just become one of the, there are many, many wonderful slow stitch groups on Facebook. I don't, I want it to stay specific to this because that is the community that we have. So if you do go there, please, please, please make sure that you answer the question. Um, because when I was doing it manually, I was kind of judging even if people didn't answer the question um, or they answered it, you know, not accurately. I, being having a human brain, could say, uh, Yes, I, I will let that person in. They're obviously, you know, from here. Now it's being done by, you know, I don't know, a Facebook thingy bob. Admin assist it's called, but it's not a human being, obviously. Um, you have to answer the question, otherwise it will just say, no, you can't come in. Please, so please do be sure to just confirm that you're a subscriber here to this channel. Um, because I hate to think of people being shut out, but it, there's hundreds of people applications a day, and I, I just can't, you know, I just I just physically can't do that. Um, what was I writing? Solar eclipse. Oh, I know what else I'm going to write. Solar eclipse, because I just love the expression. Path of totality. And do you know what else I'm going to write? The excitement of, it's right of in the middle, 50 <laughs> Super Bowls, just because it amused me. There we go. So that's my week 15. <clears throat> there you go. Oh, and I'll show you the back as well, because the back is wonderful. At one point, we will do something about backs, so I look forward to that coming up. So Solar Eclipse, Path of Totality, The Excitement of 50 Super Bowls, 
Um, I hope all my lovely friends in the States have a wonderful eclipse, if that's a thing, um, and enjoy it and, you know, be, be um, excited to be part of history. This, I think it's another 20 years before you get another one. I think I read that somewhere, 2044. Um, so, yeah, it's a wonderfully exciting day and um, thank you so much all for joining me and I hope that us in the rest of the world have tried to m be a part of the, the solar eclipse, I can't say it, the solar eclipse experience. Um, and I look forward to, um, sorry, <laughs> I've lost my thread completely. <laughs> what do I say at the end of these videos? I'm sure you all know. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to you joining me next time for more cloth tales. Bye-bye. <laughs>